Welcome to my calculus lecture series. This is part two of three, uh, finding limits graphically. It corresponds to Larson's Calculus 11th edition text for Math 1411 Calculus at UTEP, section 1.2. Here we go. All right, an informal definition of a limit. So what's going on with the limit is this. As we get closer and closer to a certain x value, in this particular example it's 2, we're trying to find out what the y values are doing. And to find the y values we might just move our cursor or our finger or our pencil, whatever it happens to be, along the graph. And so I slide the x values getting closer and closer to 2, my y values go up to 4. As x gets closer and closer to 2 from the left, so x values to the left of 2, my y values come down and get closer and closer to 4. So this is the informal idea of what a limit is. And as you saw in part 1, we have this definition, and I want to remind you repeatedly, the limit is telling us what we're doing, but we have to have very explicit instructions. The limit has to be accompanied by the input variable, so a domain variable. X is approaching C. It tells us where we're at, and it tells us what we're looking for. We're looking for what happens to the f of x values, the y values, as the x values get closer and closer to c. So all three parts of this are very necessary. The limit tells us what we're doing. The x approaches c tells us where we're looking. The f of x tells us which function we're looking at. And then the limit over here is the y values that this function is approaching as the x values are getting closer and closer to c. All right, so let's use the graph to find the limit. For all of these graphs, I use Desmos.com. Uh, it's a free online graphing utility. It is fabulous. They even have a, an app that you can download it, put it on your phone. You can have a graph at your fingertips pretty quickly. So what I did is the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x minus 4. 3x minus 4 is the function that I've graphed here. And you see the y-intercept is negative 4. The slope is 3. So as we get closer and closer to 2, so as I get closer and closer to 2 with my x values, it looks like from the left, the y values are getting closer to 2. And as I come at 2 from the right, my y values are also getting closer to 2. This leads us to the limit. As x gets closer to 2, for this particular function, my y values are getting closer to 2. It turns out that f of 2 equals 2 but we'll get to that a little bit later in, this, uh, in the chapter. All right, so this graph can be challenging. So let's take a closer look at it. The limit as x approaches negative 2 of the absolute value of x plus 2 over x plus 2. Notice that the numerator and denominator are exactly the same values for larger than negative 2 and only have the opposite values for x values smaller than negative 2. And for some people that doesn't really make sense, so a reminder, let's slide this over a little bit, go back to our pen. We could always do a chart of values. Let's gonna, we're going to pretend that was a 2 there that I wrote. And in our chart of values, we get to pick the x values. So I'm going to pick some that are to the left of negative 2, maybe a negative 4, maybe a negative 3. I can't use negative 2 because it's not in the domain of my function, right? Negative 2 cannot be put in my denominator because I'll get a 0. Instead, I'll use maybe negative 1 and 0. And I'll leave this open as that's where the negative 2 is that we can't use. When we substitute negative 4 for x, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. In the numerator, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. In the denominator, it's still a negative 2. So my output is negative 1. We're going to pretend that's a 1 there. When I put in negative 3, let's see if I can put that in here, negative 3 plus 2 in absolute values divided by negative 3 
plus 2 once again. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. In the numerator, negative 1 is an absolute value, so it'll be a positive 1. And in the denominator, it's still a negative. So a negative, excuse me, a positive 1 divided by a negative 1 gives me a result of negative 1. Quickly, we'll move back over here to the graph. Notice how to the left of negative 2, our outputs are all negative 1. Similarly, you could put in values uh, negative 1 and 0. Let's just put those in. The absolute value of negative 1 plus 2 over negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1. Uh, 1 over 1 is 1. If I put in 0, 0 plus 2, whether that's in absolute values or not, I'm going to get 2 over 2, which is 1. And here we are, every x value to the right of negative 2 has an output of 1. Now let's see if I can move this over, get it out of our way here. and bring back our graph. So, when I reasoned through this particular problem, don't let me intimidate you by that. If you're not the type that sees things in this way, you may always use a table of values to help you plot the graph. You don't have to instantly know these things at the beginning of class. By the end of the semester, I would like for you to be able to uh, compare the numerator and denominator and see the types of graphs that might come out. Now, as x approaches negative 2, here's our negative 2, that's our input, that's our x value that we're getting close to. Uh, from the right, the output is 1. However, as I get close to negative 2 from the left, the output is negative 1. Do they go to the same value? Do they meet up? No. These values do not match, so the limit does not exist. And we'll frequently call that DNE because uh, I, like many mathematicians, get tired of writing, and so we abbreviate things. So DNE does not exist. Uh, use the graph to find the limit. As x approaches 1 of 5 over x minus 1, and we can see here that x equals 1 is an issue. It's not in our domain. Remembering translations from a pre-calculus course that I'm sure you've taken, you take 1 over x and you stretch it by a factor of 5 and you shift it to the right 1. So we have an asymptote here at x equals 1. As I get close to 1 from the right, my values blow up to infinity. As I get close to 1 from the left, my values go down to negative infinity. Exactly what I've said here. Uh, blowing up whether it's to negative infinity or positive infinity, at this point, we're going to say that that limit also does not exist. And I got to give a shout out to Desmos. Uh, without them, these graphs wouldn't look nearly as tight. So thank you.